you're gonna live forever. Okay, I'm joking, that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but not really. I wanna introduce you to a friend of mine who doesn't know that I exist. His name is David Sinclair, and he's a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. The guy is 53 years old, and he's better looking than me, which I guess uh, isn't actually that hard, to be honest. Despite our Australian kinship, we differ in that for the last 20 years, David has been a leading researcher in the field of aging and has worked towards the astronomically ambitious goal of increasing our lifespan, while for the last 20 years, I've been just kind of doing nothing, really. I made a video about his work a few years ago when I was but a measly novice in the art of video making, but like a good friend, I've kept up to date with his work, and boy is it exciting. A few days ago, his team put out a paper confirming their hypothesis that aging is related primarily to epigenetic changes in DNA, as opposed to direct mutations of the DNA itself. Now, I don't wanna get into the nitty gritty of the science, but essentially, using mice, David and his team demonstrated that they could fast forward the aging process by jumbling up some of the epigenetic information. But here's where things get really interesting. They also discovered that they could rewind the aging process by returning that epigenetic information to its original state. Essentially, they proved that, at least in mice, Aging is reversible. So this begs the question, what does this mean for those of us who aren't rats? Now, I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not particularly trained in the medical sciences, but David and his team are confident that their interventions will have people living well into their 80s, 90s, and even hundreds with extremely good health. The idea of becoming old and frail and struggling to walk might just become a thing of the past. Imagine being that grandma that can slide tackle their kids at the park, or the granddad that can suplex his mate at the retirement village, or the dad that can still berate their son about how much of a disappointment they are and how they could never possibly live up to their expectations. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds way too good to be true. What's the catch? And like all big discussions, there are plenty of avenues to explore. While some dive into the practical implications of having an older population, such as pensions and healthcare structures, the ones that I'm most interested in are the ethical and philosophical, particularly around the idea that if we do in fact develop regenerative medicine, could we potentially live forever? Many people believe that death is a natural part of life. And to be fair, I think it is. But you know what else is a natural part of life? Getting eaten by a f***ing lion on the plains of Africa, or freezing to death in the tundra, or getting malaria and fevering until you feel like you've entered the ninth circle of hell. And if I chuck an Uno reverse on that and point out all the unnatural things that we do daily, driving cars, brushing our teeth, I don't even want to think what you sick freaks do in the nighttime when you get all tingly and shit. My point is that we don't really care what's natural or unnatural. It's just that for so long, we've believed that death is inescapable. Death is natural is, at least for most people, a comforting last line of defense against the forward march of our inevitable demise. It's like not swimming away from a killer whale because you know that even if you tried, you're just gonna die anyway. Also, what the hell are you doing in Antarctica? Now, one of the greatest forces on Earth, possibly the greatest, is humanity's commitment to break the chains of our biology and enact our will on this chaotic universe. For some reason though, we seem to end at death. We refuse to believe that it's conquerable. And so we'll put forth ideas such as it's natural in order to avoid the disappointment of not reaching that yearning for longer and possibly eternal life. Disclaimer. I'm not saying that every person should or would want to live forever. If given the opportunity to live longer and potentially forever, that should most certainly be a choice that you make yourself. All I'm saying is that to immediately claim that living longer or forever is straight away a bad thing is perhaps a little bit too hasty and I will explain why. Let's get back to the video. Let's disassemble some of the common reservations that people have regarding extending lifespans, perhaps infinitely so. I don't wanna live forever, I'll be old and sick. I'd rather die than be bedridden. As previously mentioned, aging research is really taking off. Whilst its aim is to increase lifespan, more importantly, it focuses on increasing our health span so that you can still be a spry old rooster at the age of 90 doing all of the things that you used to do in your 20s. Yes, even those things. I would get bored if I lived forever. 
we'd run out of things to do. I don't think this is particularly accurate. There are literally millions of things to do today in the world. With improvements in technology, it's likely that the possibilities for experiences and self-expression will expand too. If we can get to a point where AI can do much of the heavy lifting, it's likely that more of our time will be spent pursuing leisurely activities, spending time in the community with our loved ones, and working towards self-fulfillment. If you're in good health and the economy is structured differently due to advances in AI and robotics, I think you'd want to hang around a little longer. Overpopulation will suck. There's not enough resources for all of us. As we live longer and explore new frontiers of science and technology, it's likely that we'll venture out into the solar system. We'll get better at recycling and using energy more efficiently. As a matter of fact, we'll probably develop brand new ways of harnessing energy in the first place. Space is so big and our tech will likely become so good that worrying about overpopulation will be like worrying about running out of space on a memory card with an ever expanding capacity. I think that the biggest mental block is that when people are asked if they'd like to live forever, they imagine living forever as if it was happening right now. Without advancements in technology or science or social structure, this most likely wouldn't be the case. By the time all of this stuff occurs, I imagine society will look vastly different and hopefully it will be organized in a way that supports longevity. Now to use a cliche that has been beaten to death with a stick, living forever ain't all sunshine and rainbows. There are certainly things to consider before diving head first into the fountain of youth. Let's contemplate some difficult questions. What does longevity and potential eternal life mean for relationships? Believe it or not, I have a girlfriend. She's really cute, so you better stay away from her if you know what's good for you. Anyway, we want to be together five ever. But what does five ever mean when forever is actually a reality. You see, we're all wired to live our lives in blocks of roughly 100 years. When you tell someone that I'll be with you forever, what you're really saying is I'll be with you for 60 to 70 years before one of us kicks the bucket and the other gets to run amok at the nursing home. But if we could live forever, would we still take partners forever? What about having a family? As a society, it's likely that the family dynamic would entirely shift. There would be so much to do and so much time in terms of fertility, you might not even have kids for centuries. And what is the expected outcome of relationships that could last hundreds or even thousands of years? Another thing to consider is that although we may live forever via rejuvenation, we could still potentially die from other things like crashes or drowning or murder. Would this make us live our lives in absolute fear of those? As humans, a lot of the risky behavior that we take is due to the fact that we know we're gonna die anyway. Why the hell would anyone skydive? I know why, because YOLO. So you might as well have some fun. If we could live forever so long as we don't hurt ourselves, would we stop driving cars or flying planes or taking any risky behavior that could kill us accidentally? Would our ability to live forever ironically make us fear death even more? And there are other considerations that need to be taken into account. For example, what do we do about the mental health of beings that can live for so long? What are the laws regarding assisted suicide? And do we have to shift our whole perspective on the idea of suicide itself? How do you structure an economy for beings that could live for thousands of years? How do we go about living a life knowing that death isn't inevitable? Would this make someone's actual death more unbearable than it already is? And of course, would living forever make life lose its meaning? And if this is the case, is there a way to bring the meaning back? The list goes on and on. I literally can't fit them all into this video. So with that being said, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about extending our lifespan and potentially living forever? What do you think we'd have to do to prepare for it? Or do you just think it's not worth the hassle? Please feel free to leave your thoughts and discuss with others in the comments. And of course, if you did like this video, please consider subscribing. Okay, to quickly summarize. Number one, David Sinclair and his team have demonstrated that aging is reversible. Number two, Conquering death is a discussion that we have to have. The default idea that dying is natural and something that we should just accept needs to be challenged. And number three, I love my girlfriend. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.